Hi guys, school here. Welcome to another Dovetail Games Flight School lesson. Uh, we are now on lesson 11, as I call it, which is lesson 6 in set 2. All of the lessons so far are all linked in the video description, so if you want to just jump around any lesson in particular, feel free to do so. Uh, this one is a particularly important one, though. This is uh, radio navigation, as it says. Navigating and communicating with those around you is essential when flying between airports. In this lesson, you'll learn all about navigation, and in particular, VHF Omnidirectional Range Devices, or VORs as they're called. You'll be taught how to tune your radio. Cue dramatic music. Today you'll learn how to get back home using only the navigational radios. You have control of the airplane. Lovely. Fly Let's straight and level. level, heading 240 degrees at 6,500 feet at 90 knots. How do we navigate with radios? Three letters. V-O-R. V-O-R stands for VHF Omnidirectional Range, which is a radio system that lets you navigate along invisible paths extending from VOR stations on the ground. You'll use two types of equipment for VOR navigation. You'll use the navigation radios to tune VOR frequencies. The NAV-1 and NAV-2 radios are located on the right side of the two comm nav radios at the top of the radio stack in the center of the instrument panel. I'll be these things. You'll then use the VOR indicator to see your position relative to a particular that, course that. to or from the tuned VOR station. In this airplane, there are two VOR indicators, one for each navigation radio. This allows you to triangulate your position and to smoothly turn from one course to another. Take a look at the second VOR indicator just to the left of the radios in the second row of instruments. To fly along a particular course, you'll rotate the Omni Bearing Selector, or OBS knob, until that course is at the top of the indicator. If the little triangle on the right side of the indicator is pointing up, it means flying the same heading as the selected course will take you to the VOR station. If the triangle is pointed down, flying the same heading as the selected course will take you away from the station. The NAV-2 radio is currently tuned to the Flagstaff VOR, and the course is currently set to 240. The course deviation indicator needle shows the airplane's position relative to that course, and the two-stroke from flag tells you whether flying that course will take you to or from the tuned VOR station. Right now, the flag is indicating from, so if we fly the selected course 240 degrees, we'll head away from the VOR station. To fly the selected course, turn to that heading and notice where the needle is. If the needle is deflected slightly to the left like it is now, it means that the selected course is to your left. When the needle's to the right, the course is to the right. And when the needle's straight up and down, it means you're on course. Make a slight left turn to intercept the 240 degree course from the VOR station. A heading of 200 should do the trick. I actually think that... Climb and maintain 6,500 feet. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, pal. Speed I actually up. think that... We um... cruise at 90 knots. All right, all right. Just trim it out here. Um, I understood what you said, but then I understand VOR navigation. I'm concerned that anybody who doesn't understand VOR, uh, VOR navigation, just what he just said went over their head, in all honesty. Um, I don't heading south to intercept the course. I think he should have just explained that with diagrams and stuff. I'll try and explain in a second what's going on. Come on, line up. This thing doesn't want to maintain Good. Enough. We've intercepted the course. Turn right back to a heading of 240 degrees to hold this course. 240. There we go. Accelerate to cruise at 90 knots. Remember how I mentioned the importance of two VOR receivers? We're approaching an airway that we want to follow. Airways are invisible highways in the sky that extend from VOR to VOR. Right now, we're north of Prescott approaching Victor Airway 257, which runs south from here on about a 170 degree course to the Drake VOR. The Drake VOR is just northwest of the Prescott Airport. If we follow the airway toward the VOR, we'll end up in a great position to call Prescott Tower for our landing clearance. Start by dialing the frequency into the NAV-1 radio. 
That's the top right radio. Uh, you're above altitude. Try to maintain 6,500 feet. Good. Now, to actually use the frequency, we'll have to swap it from standby to active. Good. Stand now select the course to fly. On the right side of the top row of instruments is the VOR-1 indicator. Rotate the OBS knob until 170 degrees is set at the top of the indicator. Send and maintain 6,500 feet. Yeah, what did he say, 170? Hold 6,500. You're above that. Good, you're all set. Now just wait until the needle centers. As soon as it does, turn left to a heading of 170 degrees to fly that course to the Drake VOR. The needle is alive. Hold your heading until we get closer. Okay, so, oh man, how can I explain what just happened? You've got Nav 1 radio and Nav 2 radio. Nav 1 is shown on the, um, uh, the VOR display for 1 here, and this is 2, which shows what's in here. This is a standby frequency on the right and an active on the left. So you punch in the standby, press that button, it punches it into the active. That then tunes in uh, into this display here. Try to maintain 6,500 Okay, feet. Nagy, we get the picture. Trim down slightly. Um, the needles. Uh, <laughs> The needles are like VOR, they're like lines in the sky, effectively. What we're basically doing is tuning in one of the stations, which is, th this comes. particular one is over Start there turning to 170 degrees now. I can't explain to you because the guy won't stop nagging me. But essentially what we're doing now is turning left to head towards that beacon that we just programmed in at the top. Uh, that vertical line needs to be exactly vertical if it deviates to the right it means turn to 170 degrees to intercept the 170 degree course to the VOR yeah I'm doing it gently pal don't worry I could actually explain to you what's going on if you'd actually give me a minute but I actually think that he should have explained it a lot better he should have paused the sim Good and just job. showed you stuff now just track this course until we get to the VOR as we get closer needle will get more sensitive, so do your best to keep it exactly lined up. If the needle moves left, turn left slightly until it centers, then turn back to 170 degrees to track it. When you tune that in there, it tunes this to point towards whatever station it's pointing towards. You then spin this uh, OBS selector knob here, and you turn it until the needle is, is lined up exactly where you want it to be at that point you're flying towards it if your course indicator here lines up exactly with that needle point there so that's currently pointed at 170 there's 150 there 1617 south is 180 since we're now flying 170 and that indicates 170 and the line is vertical we're flying in a kind of invisible line Good. towards the, the point. The autopilot is now adjusting our heading to follow our selected course to the Drake VOR. The autopilot? Is it really? Imagine that a VOR ground station has 360 spokes coming out of it, one for each degree of heading. Each of these spokes is called a radial. The VOR system knows which radial you're on and presents that information in a way that helps you navigate along selected courses to or from VOR stations. Okay. What is not mentioned yet is the DME, uh, which I assume is this bit over here. Uh, if I'm got this correctly, that's the DME equipment. So that is the distance to the VOR station, 11.8 nautical miles, I think, or 21.7 kilometers. It says that at 177k, it'll take seven minutes to get there. Um, my knot to kilometer conversion in my head I can't do but I think that's right so there's two stations there's two VORs we can tune VOR 1 which is this and VOR 2 which is there so what we're doing at the moment is flying towards VOR 1 because that's what he told us to do hello there's a Cherokee coming this way Cherokee 109 Sierra Hotel, traffic 12 o'clock, 5 miles, opposite direction, VFR, altitude indicates 7,500. 
Cherokee Niner Sierra Hotel has the traffic in sight. An issue with fly on airways is the increased amount of traffic, since there is a greater likelihood of traffic on the same route. We try to reduce the risk of collision by flying at particular altitudes. That traffic is at 7,500 feet. Probably because he's heading in an easterly direction and flying under visual flight rules. While cruising, traffic flying on easterly headings between 360 and 179 degrees should fly on odd numbered thousands of feet. Traffic on westerly headings between 180 and 359 degrees should fly on even numbered thousands of feet. Aircraft flying under instrument flight rules fly on the thousands, while aircraft flying visually fly on the thousands plus 500 feet. That probably didn't Earl make only sense applies to, to aircraft flying more than 3,000 feet above ground level. We're lower than that, so it doesn't apply to us. Though generally, it's a good idea to stick to it any time you're cruising. What that means is if you're flying in an easterly direction, you fly an odd level. So you could fly at 5,000, 7,000, 9,000 and so on. Uh, he's flying at 7,500. 7,000 is odd, but he's plus 500 because he's There's VFR. There's another feature of VORs that we haven't talked about yet. Distance Measuring Equipment, or DME. If you look in the radio stack, you'll see a distance labeled NM, which is the distance to the selected VOR in nautical miles. Since the distance includes our altitude, it's not a completely accurate measure of location, but it's useful if you want to know about how far you are from a VOR. What does it say, NM? There's the radio stack. We're approaching Prescott's airspace, so I'll call out the tower and get our landing clearance. Prescott Tower, Cherokee 109 or Sierra Hotel is seven miles northwest, inbound for landing. We're practicing VOR tracking. Request overflight of the airport to land on 30. Cherokee 109 or Sierra Hotel, Prescott Tower. Prescott Altimeter 2992. It's a slow day. Request approved. Report two miles west. Thank you, sir. We'll report two miles west. Well, sir? Cherokee Niner Sierra Hotel. Sir? Wow. <laughs> I'm just course correcting here because the needle's deflected to the right slightly. Okay, we're, we're holding altitude and speed correctly. I'm still confused about what he said. Um, about the autopilot because I don't even know where the autopilot is in this thing. I, I just cannot see. He's not mentioned it. Autopilot US. That's not even a functional button. We'll continue tracking this course to the VOR, then track the 120 degree course outbound. That'll take us right over the airport. Oh, one important point. There's an area directly above a VOR where the signal drops off. This is called the Cone of Confusion. A loss of signal is indicated by a red and white flag on the VOR indicator. Set it up now. Once we get to the VOR, we're going to head outbound to the east. Set the heading bug to 120 degrees now. 120. Good. We're approaching the VOR. Remember, when we get to the cone of confusion, nav mode will disengage. As soon as that happens, press the HDG button to engage heading mode. Even on nav mode. Heading button? What are you talking about? There's no heading button. This doesn't seem right. I hope this is a, a preview build problem. I can see a runway over there. Um, according to this, we're 3.8 nautical away, which means when we get within about 1.5 of this, you'll see this needle go crazy. That's the cone of confusion as we fly over the VOR base station. I'm then going to turn left and I'm going to head 120, which I think is going to take us in that direction. But I'll be honest with you guys, this lesson is not really like. If, if I sat somebody down here who could fly but didn't understand VOR, I don't think they could come out with this actually understanding VOR. Like, I could put together a lesson in half an hour on a video that could explain it a lot better than this lesson can. Because he really should have just got out a map and shown you, like, this di this here and explained how that works. And then got in the cockpit. 
you need a bit of theory under your belt before you do this. So that needle's just going... Oh, not that needle. That needle should go crazy in a second. At the moment it's indicating I'm deflecting that way, but... I'm not quite over the cone of confusion, so I'm just going to adjust my course slightly. But that will just go mental in a minute. 1.9. Yeah, it's going to start going any minute now. The thing is, it's actually got the hash mark over it, which indicates that it's already gone crazy. Oh, these clouds do my head in. Just look like a five-year-old drew them with cotton wool, like in some paint. You know what I mean? Just stuck it all over the sky. I mean, better with no clouds than that, or just thin, wispy ones. Here comes the cone of confusion. All right, that's Hold steady and get ready to switch autopilot modes. Yeah, autopilot modes. Yeah, sure will. Okay, so we're according to this, we're flying over it now, but that's just gonna go button. crazy. Press the HDG button now. No, there is no HDG button, so I'm just gonna bank left, uh, heading one two zero manually. Good. Now that we're turning, rotate the OBS knob to select one two five degrees. Once we get out of the cone of confusion, we'll switch back to nav hold mode and track the 125 degree course from the VOR. Yeah, that is about 125. We are we landed down here? All right, we're receiving the VOR signal again. Without turning off heading mode, press the NAV button on the autopilot. What the heck? What NAV mode? Nicely done. Now, track this course toward the airport. I'll call up tower for our landing clearance. Well, I just pressed it, but I don't know what I did. Anyway, Prescott we're tracking. Tower, Cherokee Niner Sierra Hotel, two miles west. Cherokee Niner Sierra Hotel, welcome home. Overfly the airport midfield, then maneuver to enter final for runway 30. Runway 30, clear to land. We'll overfly midfield, then clear to land runway 30. Niner Sierra Hotel. All right, you heard the tower. Overfly the airport, then maneuver to land on runway 30. I expect you to be able to do this without input from me. If all goes well, your next flight will be your solo cross country. Oh, I've tuned in the flipping. I'll shut it up. <laughs> That's the um, the identification that you're hearing. I actually missed what he said then because I was faffing around with this. I heard him say overfly, and then I think he said land on three zero. I take it he's just going to hand over control completely to me. I don't know where that autopilot stack is. I really do not. Hmm. Maybe that's something that's not been added yet. Maybe there's a whole lot of buttons there that are going to get implemented. You need to make it so the mouse stays out the way as well. Okay, six and a half thousand, we're doing an overflight, and then runway three zero, he said, which is the opposite of where we are. So you can see on the on the needle we're heading one two zero and the opposite is three zero. It's just basically a compass. But the runways are laid out to point towards a particular direction, or the the number to point towards the direction on the compass that they're they're heading. So 30 is the runway that we're flying over, but going in that direction. If we landed on this, we'd be landing run runway 120. Or 12, I should say, with a heading of roughly 120. I say roughly, that allowed plus or minus 5 degrees off the compass. Right, I think... There's the overflight. Um... I assume overfly the field and land on runway 30. Okay, that's what it says above. It sounds like it's given me complete control, which means when I start doing this, it shouldn't 
go crazy at me. So I'm going to bring down the throttle, trim it down a little bit, and start descending. get a visual here. This graphics glitching. Okay. All right, let's start banking around a bit more. We'll throttle back. Take like flaps one here. I should create some drag and bring the speed down. Let's pitch that nose up a bit. A little bit low on profile, although it indicates that I'm too high on the papy lights. I don't really believe that for one minute. Yeah, those textures are popping in and out, can you see them? <laughs> Trees just appearing and disappearing constantly. Let's get lined up. And we'll go four flaps now. I want to get the speed down to about 60 or so. Let's throttle right back. Okay, there's 60. Let's try and hold it at 60 now. Trim her out a little bit. Slightly off uh, off track. That's okay. More kind of focused on the vertical speed, to be honest, than anything else. I can always adjust my uh, course quite easily. Okay, let's recenter. a little bit. Off centre but otherwise smooth enough. Ah, it's nice to be home. You know, you're getting pretty good at this flying stuff. Yeah, it's a bit sloppy. I mean, it was bobbing around a little bit but I was actually off centre which I'm more annoyed about than anything else. Okay, flaps are cleaned up. He's not taught us anything about landing lights, so we'll ignore those. Okay, well I guess that's wow. the end of. Th Looks like you're getting the hang of this. Tomorrow you'll be on your own for your solo cross-country flight. Woohoo! <laughs> Learn how to navigate using VOR as well. I must admit, guys. I mean, I didn't. Uh... I didn't think that lesson was very good at all. I don't think it would it would teach you how to fly VOR if you didn't know anything. I really don't. Um, I mean, I, I get it, but I, I feel like I need to explain it to you guys who don't understand in a separate video. Um, anyway, next one will be the solo cross-country flight. That's going to have to be in another video because it's quite a long one, this one. Hope you enjoyed it though. Until the next one, take it easy guys. Happy flying.